I can, but the sound isn't as good as it was last time. Oh, well, don't worry about it because, you know, that just means you're really famous and that the, uh, you know, the, the powers that be just want to nix you and make sure they sabotage everything you say. So, yeah, you, you look marvelous and you sound marvelous on our side. But our third panelist, the one that probably is the reason we're also getting censored, is, <laughs> is our beautiful ex-priest, which was our guest speaker last year, um, or last, what well, was last month here with you, Simon. And he, of course, has been here several years at the theater, draws packed houses whenever he performs here. He is a former Catholic cardinal, professor of systemic theology. I can never say his whole list of letters after his name. He, is, um, he was college president at Manuth University of Ireland and at one time advisor to Pope John Paul. What I want to say, he's also, to me, since I follow this very well, he's the foremost authority on the mind control of the biggest corporate institution in the world, that being the Vatican. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Michal Ledwith. Thank you so much, Jane. Uh, it's wonderful to be back here and to see you, Simon, alive and well in Yorkshire. And we're having breakfast here in the Pacific Northwest. I've heard nothing but discussion of the material that you so kindly covered here with us in the middle of your night when we last met. And we're looking forward greatly to continuing that. One of the things that has struck a lot of people, and myself included, is you've stated many times that you don't travel. Now, maybe this is a personal thing. If so, please forget I asked the question entirely. But you said you do not travel. Now, I thought perhaps if you were able to elaborate something on that, is there some reason of concern for your personal safety? Is there something more deep in that? Or does it relate to any of us if we were uh, to travel as well? Can you fill us in a little on that, or is it something personal? Thank you ever so much for inviting me back. You are fast becoming my favorite bunch of people in the United States. Thank you. It, it's not a personal thing. Uh, when you guys stand and look at an aeroplane, can you tell me, Doctor, what do you see when, when you look and see an aeroplane? What do you actually see? You mean when we're in an aeroplane, what do I see? No, no. When you stand and look at an aeroplane, what do you see? Are you referring to chemtrails and things like that? No, just the aeroplane. What do I see? I see an airplane. <laughs> this must be a very profound question because I can't get what you're looking for. I see an object in the shape of a cross. <laughs> That's perfectly if you are so confident in flying. Um, when when I look, I see a very thin metal craft with thousands of gallons of explosive fuel with stress lines, um, rivets, bolts, and only humans to fly it, and no intelligent compute over. It's totally irrational, but when you have actually flown in something that was made not on this planet, you learn about the potential safety qualities that are built into these uh, vehicles and it's just simply that uh, I cannot bring myself to, to go into an aeroplane uh, no matter how good the pilot is um, and how uh, irrational it is, it is something that is just deeply ingrained in me. So that's a reason why I can't at this moment in time overcome my fear however 
um, I would say that the uh, the uh, web manager, the, the the person that very kindly hosts uh, my website, has given me a book, something like Ten Steps to Easy Flying. <laughs> so, I'm very hopeful that that might just do the trick. When you referred to the lack of computer backup in aircraft to overcome human frailty in pilots, I'm reminded of an old story from years ago in California. A flight took off from Los Angeles International Airport for JFK in New York. And as they climbed out from the airport, a voice came over the intercom which said, ladies and gentlemen, you are making history. This is the first fully automated flight ever to take place. There is no captain, no first officer, no navigator. But don't worry, these computers are far more reliable than any human operators could ever be. And there is absolutely nothing can go wrong, can go wrong, can go wrong. I'm sure that was profound. Unfortunately, the sound cut out and I didn't hear any of it. <laughs> well, anyway, enough levity for this morning. Well, we have a lot of questions backed up here and I'm going to ask uh, my colleague Alison if she would launch into the deep forest right now. Well, keeping with the theme of flying, on your Connecting Consciousness blog, someone recently asked if other people were also experiencing black military helicopters flying over their homes when they were doing their spiritual disciplines. I know that there are people in our community of Yelm here that have had the same experience, myself included. It is also as if the military has a technology that picks up spikes in energy as when, as when someone starts to move up the electromagnetic spectrum. Are you aware of any technology that the US military would have that could pick up these energy fluxes? It's rather more complicated than that. The individuals who are becoming spiritual who are doing their meditation in most cases are already catalogued and identified by elite uh, military units. In many cases before even a child is born that individual is already known and targeted. That is why you get walk-ins. Those of you who are familiar with walk-ins this is a direct attempt to throw earth uh, elite government off the track incarnates into a body uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 years after that child is born, then the elite are on the back foot because they cannot track that individual. There's a big game of cat and mouse that goes on all the time. I'll talk about the black helicopters. Um, black helicopters operate uh, predominantly in Canada, Australia, the United States of America, Great Britain, and to a lesser extent uh, in South America, and to a lesser extent in the rest of Europe. Uh, a vast amount of uh, black budget is stolen from taxpayers to fund this uh, illegal operation. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you are in Great Britain or, or the United, United States. States, there is a law that yes. says if you are to fly an aircraft of any sort it must have markings. But these particular helicopters are painted black or grey and have no numbers, no, no national insignia, which is illegal. So you know that you're dealing with an elite league. government that operates above the law. The uh, helicopters are not coming to uh, take the energy of the people who are meditating. The helicopters are coming because that individual is already uh, catalogued um, and they are coming to that person as part of their normal uh, abduction because humans abduct other humans or uh, spiritual people and as I've made clear when I speak to individuals the correlation between 
bruising on your body that you cannot account for and the black helicopters is beyond doubt. So if you have, if you're one of the many spiritual or psychic people that have bruising on your body, particularly your hips or your thighs, uh, you in many cases will uh, be able to reconcile that with hearing or seeing a black helicopter. I hope that helps. Um, an adjunct to that question is, I've also heard that they're, they're using an alien technology from the helicopters to collect DNA. Um, is that true? Are they collecting DNA of people just to check their progress? And if so, why? Are they afraid of that progress? Again, mo a lot of that I didn't hear. I think I've understood. If I haven't, then please just come back. N no, the helicopters, to my knowledge, are not collecting the DNA because they already have it. Uh, ground crews will have already collected that DNA. You are born in a hospital in most cases. Your DNA is already taken. You go to the doctor to have your teeth looked at, your DNA is taken. If they don't do that, they'll steal an item of your clothing and then return it to you two weeks later. Um, they don't need to uh, invest in huge technologies to steal the DNA because uh, most people are in the medical system and therefore the records are available. Um, the DNA is very important because it links that individual just like uh, the police use fingerprints, so the elite use DNA. But the object of the black helicopters is to test uh, individuals to see how they are developing and changing in terms of drawing down their energy DNA. So a helicopter may visit you as an individual maybe five or six times a year. If you are of a particular importance to them, they will visit you nearly every week. And they will take you out of your body, they will do the tests to you, and then place you back. The object is not to kill you, but in many cases it's to inject you with nano-robots. Uh, in other cases it's purely and simply to take samples to see how you are progressing, because these people, these very spiritual people who have 11 to 12 strands of DNA connected, the forefront of the human race, the spearhead behind which all the wooden shaft stands behind. So they take samples not of the wooden part of the spear, but at the very point, because by doing that they can work out <clears throat> how much time they've got left before humanity evolves to a point that their empire is finished. So they're <clears throat> looking to these people like a bellwether. They are predicting how much time they have before they lose complete control of humanity. Thank you. That's exactly what I wanted to know. Simon, apologies for all of this. Thank Here in the know. Pacific Northwest, in the boondocks, our computers run on steam. <laughs> so, probably they're very reliable, but I apologize for this. I had a, a, a little question to ask in relation to the black helicopters. They come to take samples, etc. Is there something preventing them from doing the obvious, radiating us with something that would put us out of action, or killing us or something? Why do they not do that? Why do they just test us to see how long they've left? Is there something stopping them from doing that? Yes. The individuals concerned will have a form of protection and the elite government probably feels that all it can do is observe, take samples and make notes. Um, it's also not in their interest to kill people because these are the people that are unwittingly giving them information as to the development of the human race. So they wouldn't want to do that anyway. 
but in many cases those individuals have um, a protection which means that elite government <clears throat> or governments can only go so far. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start over again with the second question that I had, and it's in reference to something that you and I have spoken to when we were talking one-on-one, -on -one, and it's in regards to an interview that's online with Max and Sarah at Bases at the Barge, where they discussed a place, um, actually a bubble between 3D and 4 dimension, that was created with alien technology where there's still a Nazi death camp paradigm going on. And I wanted to ask, first of all, um, you confirmed for me um, that that place does in fact exist. And my question is, can they are they just harvesting off of the individuals that were in the original death camps? In other words, are there incarnate beings there that are still playing that paradigm out over and over again? Um, I know that they're also using people that have been MKUltra mind controlled. Those people, um, myself included, are able to go to that paradigm. Um, it's a participation level. But I'm wondering if they've been able to keep the people that they uh, experimented on in Nazi Germany there as energetic beings. I am aware that there is, you use the term bubble, there is an interdimensional space between the third and the fourth. Uh, where a number of these entities reside, I cannot confirm, you use the term death camp, I cannot confirm that. But what I can confirm is that there is a artificial realm between the third and the fourth. The, the terminology I would use is just out of phase. That's my terminology, just out of phase. It's just out of phase of the third reality. So. If that's the third dimension, that's the fourth dimension. Uh, a modern scientist would say that you couldn't get a piece of paper in there, whereas you could get a city the size of New York in there. But it is possible to create extensions within that. Um, now, whether there is something as complex as what you have described, the reason I'm not certain about it is because these uh, beings have the technology to come into the third dimension and harvest the energy and I'm not quite clear what the advantage would be having it in the fourth dimension. My understanding of, I, I beg your pardon, between the third and the fourth, my understanding of having a realm between the third and the fourth is simply that it is harder to from either the third or the fourth dimension. So it's about um, hiding and fortifying rather than um, spending all your time doing something that you could do just as easily in the third. So I suppose what I'm saying is I can partially confirm what you've said, but I have no knowledge for the actual term of death camp. Okay, and then Max uh, also said in the Basis to the Barge interview that that is not the only thing that they've created with this piece of alien technology between third and fourth dimension. So besides that space um, where they're, my experience has been that they are reenacting uh, those atrocities because I've actually physically gone out of body and experienced it. What other things have they done with that technology that you're aware of? In other words, what other spaces have they created and what other paradigms are they using? Because my understanding is they're using that kind of to set, it, set up a paradigm and then it actually um, bleeds down into our reality. So what can you tell us about that? 
Yes, this originally started because certain entities uh, wish to be uh, out of phase reality, but needed access to the third and the fourth. So the very, very first time that this technology was used from the alien perspective was to create a safe haven for reptilian type entities. With their dealings with some of the higher group of um, elite, financially elite humans, they, in connection with Archonic uh, influences, that the Archons, looked at the possibility of mapping um, a different timeline or at least altering people's perception so that human consciousness evolved in a different route which meant that humans did the work for them. In other words, these creatures are incapable of making something happen so they need the human race to choose that course for them. And one of the ways to do that is through television, the newspapers, but it hasn't had the effect that they've expected. There's been much more resistance. So just as Dr. Joseph Goebbels and others looked at subliminal uh, influencing through images and sound, the next in, I suppose, the propaganda is to lay something out that then uh, is connected through uh, a form of energy waves to the reality on Earth, which then could make people think that a particular course of action was their own choice, rather than they were being led there. So that I am aware of, uh, but I'm also aware that it's not having the results they expected it to have. So, in other words, they found that the human psyche uh, is harder to push than they initially thought. But yes, I would agree on the second point you made totally. Thank you. Hi, Simon. I want to Hi. Thank, you. thank you so much for coming again. It was amazing to have an opportunity to share with you before, and we're all very excited that you're here now. Um, my question... My, my question, there you go. Uh, my question is about a movie um, that started a roller coaster called Tomorrowland. It just came out. Um, it's with George Clooney. And it was profound because it showed what happened to the world when it was ending from people's belief that there was nothing they could do. It was just too big, too difficult, um, the melting of the ice shelves, the environment, the wars, the hunger, the drought, endlessly, and they gave up. What was discovered is that in another dimension, there was a machine, and this machine was a tachyon machine that sent waves of thought into this dimension, that was hopeless and despairing and fearful and uh, victimized. The ending, uh, before I get to that, let me just say that the ones in charge of the dimension that had this machine wore reptilian costumes. Um, and it was really clear that, quote, as you would say, tells in the movie, but what changed it was those people who did have a powerful psyche, who were not afraid to dream, who knew there could be a way through mind and thought. Um, I wanted to ask you, is there a machine that you know of that is doing this, a particular machine? And if so, where is it located? <coughs> The machine has for a very long time, but it's only recently been changed in terms of its purpose. The machine has existed for thousands of years and was designed to lower the vibrational rate of humans across the planet to keep people basically in the status quo. 
But ultimately, that battle has been a losing battle for them. And so, mixed in with Hollywood, they've attempted to seed ideas that the Earth is going to have a cataclysmic end. Either it's going to be struck by a meteorite, or the east coast of America will be submerged, or the west coast of America will be submerged, or the earthquakes will destroy this part of America. And the number of people who uh, contact me are genuinely frightened, genuinely scared. The reality is that if enough people buy into this, it will happen. We mustn't buy into it. Um, you know, when, when, when the Knights Templars offered me uh, bodyguards and armoured cars and a nuclear bunker, I wouldn't accept the nuclear bunker because to accept the nuclear bunker is to accept there will be a nuclear war. Um, so the machine that has for eons been holding people down is now being experimented with to try to um, get people to create their own destruction. That's, and I think you understand that. I think that's why you asked the question. So yes, you're right. And so people mustn't buy into the fear. Um, just imagine tomorrow you're going to wake up and the sun is going to be shining. A beautiful part of the movie was they gave a little button uh, to dreamers and when they pressed the button, they wound up in a dimension where all things were possible. So it's like that little button exists within all of us. But this brings me to the next question I had. And when I was listening to an interview you did with Carrie Cassidy, I think it is, um, you mentioned something called the Orion Cube, is, is that correct? that was found uh, at the Roswell crash. And mm. it showed timelines, and you mentioned that uh, one of the reasons why Japan was attacked and sunk was because that showed an ad advantageous timeline for the United States. I have two parts to this question. One is, we are changing timelines and as the morphogenetic field grows and we become more empowered in wholeness i know the timelines are changing if you have an indicator that is revealing projections of timelines from the 50s and we are now in 2015 did it show these possible mutations? And if it did not show that, um, why would the elite be planning another um, event in Japan that would possibly sink it? Because we're in a different paradigm right now. I'm very interested in the mutation of timelines because I believe as we raise frequencies, we become aware of all new possibilities. That's a very good question. Up until 20 years ago, the elite had actually placed the Earth on the timeline that they wished. Something around 15 to 20 years ago, the Earth jumped the timeline, now on a much more positive timeline for humanity. So a negative group are doing everything they can in an attempt to try and push the Earth back onto the timeline or the, the railroad track that they want. The sinking part of Japan was an attempt to push the earth to the timeline that they foresaw or they've been robbed of. You must understand that the elite were promised the new world order 10, 15, 20 years ago. It hasn't happened. So they're desperate because they have a massive uh, following, a huge uh, army of people who all pay them money and they have to try and keep their membership uh, under control and one of the ways of doing that is to um, make these great big world happenings which I think didn't the Americans coin the term shock and awe but also in an attempt to bring the timeline to a more favorable from their perspective so the Orion Cube or the Orion Box 
depending on your terminology. I think it depends which arm of the military you come from. Was, to my knowledge, first uh, recovered by uh, human elements after the Roswell. It was then understood and connected with the uh, pilot's chair. You can connect to the cube with a pilot's chair from an alien spacecraft. You have the capability um, to travel dimensions and a partial time travel. Now, what they were able to do was take this technology and look into the future. So, not in a very successful way, because if you may remember from some genuine um, whistleblowers, how children were being sent forward into the future. And there's a very important reason why they use children. But uh, So they were experimenting with something that they knew wasn't really a viable. However, it did give them uh, views of America in devastation and destroyed. But it took them a long time to understand that this wasn't the future. It was a potential future. So if you send a hundred children through time, one of those children will come back and give you the information that America was the most powerful country in the world. So that's the timeline you'd go for. That's what that was all about. So you would want to create situations that push you onto that timeline. You have to first identify that timeline. That was perhaps the hardest thing. Uh, and everything that happens on a massive scale like that is designed to try to push the earth towards it. The, the lesser happenings are just purely about trying to control and frighten the population. Simon, coming back to your comment earlier about how we create reality, if enough people accept something, it's going to happen. There's been a lot of talk over the last few months about a possible natural disaster caused by the collision of a comet with the Earth in September. Uh, this is gaining a lot of momentum, and I'm wondering if it's turning into a self-fulfilling prophecy or not. Any illumination to shed on that? Right. Um, something has come into our solar system. A large object has been detected by both the Vatican, uh, the Lucifer telescope, I think, was the first one to pick it up clearly. Uh, NASA obviously have detected it. But this is not a comet. When you create energies, those energies, if we do it in the right way, can manifest into physical reality. I very rarely talk about the Archons. I, talk, I, I keep away from the, the subject because it is a very, very difficult subject and many people would misunderstand perhaps what I say. But you're a great bunch of people, so why don't we talk about the Archons? The Archons are non-physical and they actually manipulate the reptilian force, although the reptilians are so proud that they wouldn't accept that. The Archons, uh, and I have had a conversation with a good friend of mine just on this subject, the Archons are in their own way trapped, and they can see the way that the human race is developing, and they need to leave. They cannot leave through the portal, because the portal is on the verge of collapsing. So all this has been known for many thousands of years. And as sad as it is, and as I'm sure as um, many people would argue with me who have a very accepted view of science, all of the great big advances, or most of the great big advances that, that have come from human race have come with the help from something else. Um, not 
penicillin, something like that. Let's take that for, for argument's sake. That was created by, by Lister, I think. And basically, those type of uh, discoveries or rediscoveries uh, are natural, uh, the brilliance of the human mind. But if we look at, say, the Industrial Revolution, if we look at the creation of atomic power, these very, very, very little uh, developments in human technologies have been brought about for one purpose, and that is to force the human race ahead of its normal plan to develop technologies that will enable uh, these creatures to obtain what they need. For instance, if you wanted to build a spacecraft of an enormous size, you would need nearly all of the population to build it for you. And you would also need the raw materials, the exotic materials, the processes. And so Earth and the humans on Earth have for the last 200, 300 years technologically advanced at an unnatural rate. I don't care what any scientist says to me. So the way that the human race has evolved technically is unnaturally fast. It's outstripped humans' spiritual understanding. And that was deliberate because had the spiritual development been in peace, then many, many people would have said, slow down, this isn't right. But because our spiritual development has been artificially held back and our technological advances have been um, synthetically pushed upwards, we have been led to believe that this is the only way forward, that technology is the saviour. And if those of you who can remember the 1970s, that was the great period where people were told that science was going to save the world. We would have, you know, we'd run out of food if we didn't have this, or we'd have nowhere to live. We now have corporations all over the globe manufacturing uh, very advanced technologies. These technologies have been created by people because this energy that I refer to, the archonic energy, was incapable of creating it itself because it's not corporeal, it's not no body. It is an intelligence, it is an energy that physically cannot create. But what it's done is it's gone in and captured the minds of the leaders uh, in many countries and the individuals who exert power and through them it has created a massive network. It's very clever, so uh, I will say that. It's very clever, it's very manipulative. Now this is where the ideas of killing three quarters of the population come from because once this device has been built or once the technologies have reached a set level they then say, we don't need any more technology. We have what we need. We don't need the people. And this is where it's about. And now the top arm of the Illuminati have jumped on that and they've said, oh yes, because then we can enjoy the planet without having to look at all these useless people. So we have two, two threads here. The, the top Illuminati who have been promised the Earth and they can walk in Central Park and they won't see anybody else because everyone else is dead. And then you have the Arconic group, which are saying once we have achieved the technological level, well, we will just destroy these people because they've created for us this technology. What people don't realize is that if that were ever to happen, which it's not going to, but if it was ever to happen, this little group of Illuminati who think they're going to inherit the world would also be destroyed because they will become a hindrance because their knowledge is very great. And, you know, there are a number of people now in very high up positions who have woken up to that. And that is why we're getting a kickback and getting a lot of help. So um, what I would say is that um, there are unseen energies at work which have manipulated the human race for thousands of years in ways that even researchers of our subject are not aware of. Even people who have spent 20 years researching this, some of them don't grasp just how 
um, manipulated the human race has been. And that's why the human race has been allowed to increase its population um, so that uh, statistically more scientists are born. You increase the pool, therefore you increase the, uh, the genetic chance of somebody being a genius. And this is a reason for this, because all these people are being identified at a very early age and siphoned off and end up working in universities or corporations who are then given contracts. They work on those contracts never to see whatever happens to them because they are taken and used towards this goal that this uh, un unseen consciousness has. Uh, and people in the Vatican uh, have thrown their lot in with it because they believe they are on the winning side. Or they did think that. And now we have a situation where there's a lot of doubt, which is the winning side. Um, so, you know, that's, that's where we are at the moment. So basically, um, that's still continuing, but the changes that have occurred in the last five years have been such that the outcome is in doubt from their perspective. In other words, they've always believed that they would get what they wanted, but for the last five years, they now doubt that they can possibly achieve it. And this is why different groups like the White Dragon Society, the Red Dragon Society, the whole uh, group of the Knights Templars are taking themselves away from what was at one time one solid um, elite organization. They are fracturing left, right, and center. Thank you. Now, this object that's supposed to impact us in September, detected by the Lucifer Telescope of the Vatican, is that part of that whole plan then? I didn't hear the last part. I, I'm wondering if the object, which I described to you as a comet, which you said is not a comet, that the Lucifer Telescope detected, is that part of all of this plan that you have just described so well for us? A few years ago, and more recently, Hollywood uh, made very, very popular the concept of uh, an object like a meteor was going to hit the earth and how missiles could be launched and or nuclear bombs could be placed on it to blow it up so it didn't hit the earth. In other words, they were attempting to get the population of earth or at least the western world ready for a potential um, contact with some uh, large body. My understanding for September uh, is a little bit different, there is a strong potential of a lie being placed that a, a large object will impact somewhere in North America. It's not going to, but that is what may be told. The object being for uh, some form of civil unrest or civil rebellion in some of the states of North America. Uh, you yourselves will know better than most because you're in America and because you're awake. You'll know that the governor of Texas has asked for his share of the gold back. Um, and you, you will probably know that there are uh, half a million gold bars held in the Shanghai and Hong Kong Bank in America. Allegedly. Allegedly. The, 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 the inventory says half a million gold bars. The governor of Texas wants the gold back proportionally. Each um, state can claim back a proportion of gold from the federal gold reserve proportionate to, to the state. The reason for that is Texas wants to create its own money. Now, that's not new. <clears throat> There's always been the talk about it, and to be honest, all you would need to do is have a, a gold coin and stamp a star on it, and it would be a Texas dollar or a Texas something or other. Why would the governor of Texas want to create his own uh, currency? Why did the governor of Texas order his own uh, internal um, guard 
to watch the Jade Helm operation and report back to him? Why did the governor of Texas make statements about Jade Helm that was infringing on people's liberties? I think he's aware that in the fall there may well be something uh, that is used to attempt to create a situation in some of the states uh, that would lead those states to try to cede from the Union. So a potential impact from a large object could be one way of creating enough civil disorder which would allow the federal government to put into operation what it's practiced in Jade Helm. I do not believe the earth will be hit by an object, but I do believe that there will be talked up. Thank you so much. Um, I've heard you refer to somebody's star family as a specific group with an energetic overlay of another group. For example, a person may be Palladian, but they have a reptilian overlay. Besides using an overlay to see if this person can work through the differences in these two cultures, is there another purpose for having an overlay? And what exactly is the mechanics of an overlay? Okay. When a soul is created by God or source, that soul is given all the information it needs to choose its family. In other words, its free will. That soul will decide to incarnate in a physical or a non-physical body. That is its choice. It's making the first choice. It doesn't have to stay in that body. It can go wherever it pleases. But let us say that it incarnates in a Palladian body, which is fifth dimensional. Then let us say that that Palladian decides, a thousand years, decides that it wants to learn more and experience, and then goes into the fourth dimension. And let us say that it either does two things. It either incarnates in a reptilian body, or it incarnates in a Palladian body, which I use the term higher human, because it is at a higher vibrational rate than the third dimensional human. If it's in a Palladian body, but comes to the fourth, it will connect with reptilian elements. When I see a person's aura, I don't see colors, but I see a flowing, wavy energy. When you connect with a different sort of energy, it affects the connection or the contact between your auric field and their energetic field. Now, depending on the type of energy they've got, it will uh, change or alter. Now, in some cases, uh, it penetrates into the aura and you begin to take on some of the personality or some of the uh, concepts of these creatures. But that's actually necessary if you are there to learn. So a person in a human body could have a Palladian fifth dimensional soul, but the energy around them could contain a reptilian or anything else because they have had a soul contract or they have had some dealings uh, with another group. And it's surely about learning. Uh, the two enemies not a good word to use but we'll use it would be reptilian and palladian for me the key exciting parts are when you have a palladian father a palladian mother and a reptile child is born to them because will parents accept the child will the child accept the parents and there are experiments going on all over the globe at the moment and have been for the last 20 odd years if enough healing can be done, if enough uh, families or groups can put aside their differences and connect, then it does two things. First of all, it sends out a ripple of energy of a very healing nature far and wide.
but on a practical level it actually demonstrates to others that change can successfully be brought about. Now, if you are participating in an operation like this and you're in a reptilian group, you, you don't put the soul of the janitor, that's not to say a janitor isn't a good person, but I'm looking at it from a hierarchical point of view, you don't put the soul of a janitor to a person and then give them um, a different energy. You put a princess, a prince, or a queen, or a what have you, because the only way the, 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 the reptilian alien uh, psyche can be changed is when their representatives on the earth feed back energy to them and dictate the way they need to change because it was always known when the human race was initially altered hundreds of thousands of years ago it was known this point would reach there was no getting away from it this was all predicted the Mayan calendar saw it anybody who had the ability to look through to the future saw this coming and there are two ways of dealing with it you can either be an ostrich and stick your head in the sand and say I'm not going to worry about it until it happens or you can say we need plan B we need to fall back on this. So there was a group from the reptilian side that said, can we successfully uh, heal the differences with the human elements? And so that is why you have reptilian children of a soul nature born to higher human parents or reptilian souled parents having higher human children. That is why... Um, People, couples who get together, gen sometimes have somebody who's completely different to them. This is a massive experiment that is taking place, um, probably because divine um, source is interceding to attempt to offer a way through, another alternative, which by free will people could or could not take. So it's an incredibly exciting time, and I'm aware of a number of situations over the globe where this is actually happening. Um, it's not out of a hundred, maybe thirty work, but generally it doesn't work at the moment simply because people are unwilling to forgive. Well, that we can change. Thank you. You mentioned the last time you were here in your description of the DNA, the two strands we were given in the manipulation genetically and the 10 strands and the mitochondria a DNA that is in the etheric body. I have been contemplating this a lot because I believe that what we're doing right now is in our focus of wholeness and unity, becoming aware that this illusion of separation is in fact that. It is my etheric body, it's not somebody else's. And because of that, it should be available to me as I pull in strands of DNA that I am, quote, remembering who I have been before the manipulation and who I am in, I just, and who I am in the future. Because Time is an illusion, and if time is an illusion and there is no separation, which philosophically I totally know is true, and I'm learning <laughs> how to apply this. something here is not agreeing with me. No, I'm kidding. Um, then what I'm asking you is, is this the most effective way for us to be able to begin entwining more and more these strands of DNA by focusing on these are our memories of past, present, future, future. Clicking out. Since I'm not sure what you heard Basically, what I'm asking is, it is our work to entwine these strands of DNA 
it is our strands that we went and accepted the illusion of separation in our journey here through all our different ancestral lines. But it is ours and it lives in no time and all times. So the more we focus on wholeness and the more we call forth our memories of who we once were, and who we are in our wholeness, would we not be accessing greater and greater ability to become these new strands of DNA? The, the, the most important thing to do is to declare right to have back stolen from us. So before you access or gain memories, you have to gain the DNA. And the first thing you have to do is to say, I have a right, which you did, you did mention, I have a right to what was mine, and no one had a right to take it from you. It was, it was taken in trickery, uh, because people generally are very trusting, and people can't imagine that someone could be nasty because you wouldn't do it so you wouldn't do something bad to somebody like that so you can't imagine somebody else would so when somebody came along and said what they said we just accepted it because we had no knowledge of evil like that once you have declared this DNA is yours and you want it back then you can gain your memories the way to draw the DNA down is to try to return your physical body to as it was before all the pollution, all the uh, mind control, before all of these things were used to contaminate the body. And also your soul is pure, so all you have to do with your soul is to reaffirm the right to take back the DNA. It's, it's actually frighteningly simple it's so simple that people don't realize it people will spend a great deal of time going through certain processes when in actual fact that comes later at this stage all you have to do is to say what was stolen from me I want returned that's the first point then you do all the other processes to combine what you've regained in a supportive environment because if you try to go too quickly your organic brain won't cope with it so first stage is to regain what was taken second stage is to uh, gently test everything and then the third stage is to say right we're ready to go on full power now so we'll go forward so I, I agree I agree with what you said Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Is it time? You do? I still have more questions. <laughs> I'm going to change the subject slightly. I'd like to talk about the economy. Um, there is much talk about this all uh, an economic collapse, uh, that the dollar will crash. It's not my particular... Um, belief system that it will be uh, a total collapse. However, because of the BRICS and the new currency that will be made available that is gold back with Russia and India and China and 30 plus countries, um, what I'm seeing is there will have to be some very ingenious ways for the United States government to create enough disturbances that they can pull in support from other countries or at least get the people to take their attention away from the fact that our gold, excuse me, our dollar is made with smoke and mirrors and no gold. What are you seeing for, I keep getting the fall of this year, uh, in terms of the dollar and the United States choices to control um, the uh, 
display of the veil being lifted and the dollar being revealed for what it actually is. Okay. Uh, well, surprise, surprise. It's been very good volume-wise or quality of sound. And when you get into this topic, I half of your question was lost, but I think I understand broadly what you're saying. There have been three meetings now. Uh, the object of the American government is to prevent a dollar collapse. Those meetings uh, are designed to bring in foreign currency, uh, but not foreign paper money, but gold. So, so hang on. Yeah. Yeah. No. I don't know. We're late starting. Bye. You do it then. Yeah, that's a, an interruption there. Um, so don't worry about that. Uh, the important point here is that um, if foreign investors can be encouraged to bring gold, diamonds, bonds into America, then those who control the middle banking system won't pull all their money out. So these conference calls that are taking place almost as we speak are an attempt to lever in foreign real money and place them even just for a temporary period of maybe six weeks to the American banks or the American bank over the fall period to prevent a collapse. Because unlike Europe, they cannot fill America with more worthless money because that's the problem. So that's the object. Now, you, you had a second question here. The second question relates to taking people's minds off the situation. And I probably think that was worse for you than me. Um, the object of taking people's minds off the situation will only occur if America loses control of its right to call the dollar the number one currency in the world. If it was to lose its number one position, then you would find um, an orchestrated state rebellion. In the same way that the rebellion in the Ukraine was created, so that there would be a number of battles in some states. What we could refer to as the black states, uh, those are the ones that the federal government has already happily written off. So that is an issue for the federal government. The issue for the federal government is those states that income generate those states that produce more than they consume. And if you are looking at losing some of those states, then you will create a sideshow to take people's attention and say, if you were to leave the union, this is what will happen to you. Well, it's like what happened to Japan. If you don't do what we tell you, what happened to Japan will happen to you. And on a lesser scale, if you don't do what we tell you, then you'll have a terrorist attack. So basically, um, the whole situation revolves around whether foreign investors will be money over the fall period, because if they do, they will stabilize the economy this year. I have one last question. Um, you had mentioned in our first moment that your soul was divided into three parts, uh, reptilian, mantid, and hollow earth. I am not familiar with what it feels like to be a hollow earth human. I wanted to know, have you experienced hollow earth? 
And is it the same as what Tolkien wrote about in Middle Earth? Uh, sounds like Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth. Um, I, I, I'm not familiar with what this gentleman has written, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. Um, I think the thing is that all I'm prepared to say is that after the collapse of Lumeria and Atlantis, when a group of people realized that humanity left unchecked and uncontrolled uh, an influence from outside uh, could ultimately destroy itself, created a safe haven, a place of purity where no contamination could get in. Um, is that not what the Vatican is? place where you keep your own ideology and you have rules and regulations to maintain the system um, but with hollow earth it is less about how you dress and more about what you believe there's an, I feel my human part feels no different from any other human part in the sense that I choose how I want to be and I choose how I interpret what I see and whether I uh, decide that I want to be fearful if I want to be controlling if I want to be violent or whether I want to work with the people around me and treat everyone equally that is the choice that all souls make depending on um, their background will dictate whether it's an easy choice or whether it's a difficult choice so I just think that the reason that my my human element came from where it came from was that nobody could corrupt it in the intervening years because if you have a soul no matter what it is and it incarnates in bodies it will become used to an organic body that thinks in a certain way that has values whatever those values are and it, a soul begins to want that environment for instance I often see people in this lifetime whose soul are, is trying to draw the person back to something 10,000 years ago because the soul has things it likes and if it's in a physical body today, it wants that physical body to experience what that soul experienced 10,000 years ago because it wants to get the feeling for that. So if you take a person's soul and you keep it locked away for a, for a period of time, it doesn't get that influence. If you then put it into a body, it has a clean slate. And so therefore its judgments interpretation of stimuli, its interpretation of events are not dictated by 100 years of television or 200 years of newspaper they are immediately calculated against the time that Lumeria and Atlantis fell and what caused that. that? Okay. Thank you. Simon, if I could come back to your comments on the efforts to stabilize the dollar. Is, okay. uh, is the trouble that the euro is going through at the moment, particularly with the Greek debt crisis, is that connected with this process as well? Um, in a very strange way. In 2008, there was a collapse which was blamed on the subprime market which then hit across the western world that wasn't what caused it at all uh, three or four key families drew out their fortunes not from one corporation but from many corporations and let it be known that they didn't have any confidence anymore that's what caused that crash the crash was partly orchestrated because it left their friends to come in and buy stocks at a very low rate. Every crash that I am familiar with was orchestrated by elite people 
so that they could come in and buy those stocks at quarter price. But this crash was not orchestrated for those reasons. That is why it is such a concern to the American government, because it is losing control of its ability to do boom and bust. So it's heading for a bit of a crash, which is not controlled by those in charge. And that's where the panic is coming from. The, the European situation um, has been stabilized because fake money, zeros, what, what you guys call fiat money, has been accepted by the governments of Europe as real. The reason they did that was because they are not in debt to the same way that the North American government is. So if you are only a little bit in debt, you, go, you, you, you can go into more debt happily. You are in so much debt that it's just a joke. What's the point of it? And that's where we are in North America. It's just a total joke. And it doesn't work anymore. So this is why uh, it's desperate to bring in real value, real gold, diamonds, bonds for, for um, land. That's why the, the Chinese are buying up land, because that's where they see the value. That's why the, 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 the Chinese want land, because why would they want anything else? Because land will hold its value. And that, that's the key. And the Chinese really are showing us exactly how they intend to play the game. Um, because when this crash occurs, all debt will be balanced against land. And if you read your history between the two wars, uh, Germany had a huge financial crash. And when the new currency was brought around, it was valued against the land. So all of the land in buildings were valued and that's how the currency was brought forward so um, we can't look at Europe and say it's the same situation as America because Europe is not so far down the road in debt as is America uh, and the, the large corporations in America no longer uh, believe that uh, more zeros on a computer is going to help okay Thank you so much indeed. Well, I think this is a good point at which we'll invite our audience to participate directly with their questions. So we'll take a five-minute break until we get organized for that and give okay. you a chance to catch your breath as well. Thank you okay. so much for those fascinating.